Unfortunately, producing a Batman cape is not as easy as it sounds, especially when each different costume has a different cape. This one in particular has two tones on that, and that was going to be the difficulty. Let's get started. Let's start off easy with the basics. I did darken down the tone on the suit and I painted gold what was yellow and then I switched out the head sculpt. I ended up switching back to the original as that is what the owner of this piece commissioned me for. I just wanted to do this for show. But let's get started with the actual cape and if you want to see more videos on cape making I'll leave a playlist in the corner. Let's jump right into the project as I have shown this technique before so you can refer to the playlist for those techniques and cutting patterns etc. What I want to show you here is the splines on this particular cape. Now this is my prototype. Now you are dealing with two pieces of material now that are glued together so the thickness is going to increase. So that means that the splines on the back that you see here are going to be larger reason is well you've got more material and you need to leave space for the wire you're going to insert and that's going to depend on the thickness of wire you're using i'm using a 24 gauge a little bit thicker now even though in this shot the cape looks nice i don't like the way that looks around the neck it's got to be flush with the cowl maybe for a different figure this would work but not in this particular case and I need to find a way to tuck it back into or under the cowl so that it has that flush look. So if you take a closer look here, let me zoom in, you're going to see what I'm talking about. And I don't like the way the edge sets either. So I decided to make another prototype and this time I glued down the fabric to each other using Elmer's Craft Bond Spray. This stuff has to be done outside. It's sticky, it's messy, it's really, really strong odor. Now fortunately this Elmer's glue dries fairly quickly. So it allows you or actually pushes you to work quickly with your material. But once you've bonded it together, you can square it up on your cutting board, on your cutting pad. And I left a quarter inch at the top so I could fold it over and place a wire underneath. And I've already done that so for video purposes. Now, as you can see, this is my first prototype and it looks tiny against the material that we're now going to cut. Even though it has a wire on the inside, you can still fold it, it's still flexible. That's what I like about this glue. It doesn't dry hard, it has a flex to it. Now, as you're placing your corners together, make sure that there are no bubbles in the actual fabric. Now, the label does say that this is a permanent or it can be a temporary bond. Well, in my opinion, you really can't have both. It's either temporary or it's permanent. In this case, I end up finding out that it's a temporary bond. So you may have to go back into the edges and use a standard glue to glue it together. Using a rotary cutting edge or a blade, it's the best thing to do to cut these ovals or these half circles. And in this case, I wanna stay away from the wire that I already inserted. I don't wanna cut into the wire and I wanna leave enough space for it to flex. So I'm gonna back away about a quarter inch on the edge and then cut my half circle it's a bit more difficult to cut through two pieces of material when you fold it like this it's now four pieces of material so it will bind on you it will bunch up like this so be careful cut slowly so that if you do have to do any trimming it's minimal but it will take you a while to cut through that thickness of a material At this point that you've cut your half circle and you've got your wire at the top, you can now size it up with your action figure and see if it's actually going to fit. This is the original pattern. It's obviously really tiny compared to this one. So I believe I've made it too large. Let's see. 
And yes, I'll have to cut off at least uh, about, about an inch off the bottom, maybe three quarters of an inch. And that way I can size it up so I don't have the cape dragging. Maybe for a different figure, the longer length will work. This one does have the cape coming down to the ankles, so we do have to cut off the excess part of the material. And you can retrofit the figure to this one more time and as you see I pulled it down about a inch off the top and that's because that's what's going to fold over onto the shoulders to make the cape uh, come next to the edge of the cowl at the front just on, over the emblem. So we are in the approximate uh, vicinity of the size that we need. So now we need to measure this out or cut our pattern for the different scallops. And in this case, the scallops are more pointed. It's up to you if you want to have five on each side or six or seven or eight. The bigger they are, the easier they are to cut and to work on. In this case, I just duplicated what I have on the smaller size. And I think I did it a little too big on the center piece but it still looks good on the final product. Now, the splines that you see here, I ironed those in, and you will have to iron those in before you start sewing, why? Because it'll give you a guide to do your sewing on that particular area. Now, in the ones that do not require a wire, you can sew it next to the edge, but on the ones that require the wire, you're going to have five wires in here, including the top piece. So it's four at the bottom, one at the top, which is the main wire going across the, uh, the shoulders. And you'll need to have that extra space for that wire. I'm using 24 gauge because it's more material. I usually am using 26 gauge because it's thinner, one sheet of material. So this is going to make a difference in the gauge wire that you're going to use. How much material will that wire have to be supporting to make that pose? Now notice how I placed a black circle as a guide. Well, that is because I don't want to sew all the way up to the top. I want to sew underneath that half circle so that when I place it on the figure, it does not intercede or does not disrupt the cowl. It's got to look flush. I don't want those seams to be coming from the back of the neck or the back of the head. So I cut a pilot hole in the cape with a hole punch just large enough to stretch over the top of the neck. And I glued it down at the front. I'm telling you, it didn't work. It just looks ugly. But let me show you what it looks like in the back, even though it's flush against the back of the head, I don't like the way it bunches up behind the head. And let me show you what that looks like. Here it looks okay from the front. You look at the back, it still looks okay because you have a stance that is a museum stance. But once you put it into a dynamic pose, look what happens to the cowl. It fluffs up and that looks really bad. It, it The glue is not holding it around the edges in the front. Uh, there's so much material there that is just causing a problem. So I need to change the pattern around the neck for it to work with the dynamics of these different poses. And the solution was to cut a larger oval for the cowl that's already embedded into the actual body. And you. If you've taken off the cape, you'll notice that there's a cowl going around the shoulders into the back. Well, you want to cut an oval large enough to be able to glue it around that oval that is on the body. And that's going to be tricky because you'll need to leave enough material to fold over and create a seam so that you don't see the edge of the cloth. Within that seam, you'll have to use a small wire to embed into that recessed area around the cowl to hold the cape in the back. And yes, you will have to glue it in, but that wire will keep it in shape. Now 
Notice that the front of the cape or the actual shoulders, I did have to cut the cape in half. So I did have to separate that wire and I did have to drill two slots, not holes, two slots to put in the ends of that wire so that it, it looks like it's coming from out of the uniform or the cowl. The same process is for the back underneath the cowl, holding it in with a wire and some glue to have that same effect. In this particular case, the material that I'm using as a liner on the inside is a purple cotton, but it tends to fray. Let me show you a trick. This is not a new technique, and it actually is a very old technique used by tailors and seamstresses. If you've got any fraying, then you singe it. You take either a match, in this case I have a lighter, and you just singe those frayed edges. If you don't singe those, they will continue to fray and it will have a mess of threads coming off of those edges. You do the same when you do your sewing and you cut the thread, you singe it. If you've got any paint touch-ups that you've got to do, this is the time to do it. Don't paint anything afterward because you can transfer paint to that cape or anywhere else. If you've got any spraying to do, make sure you cover that cape very good so that you don't ruin it. I'm going to leave you with some video and a playlist of other things you can watch on this topic. Ha ha ha!